Super Casanova. What's up, bro? What's good, famo? You know, it's like 99 degrees in New York, so let me know if I got too much ACs and fans on, because I know they're going in the back. I can turn one yeah, of them yeah. off, but I ain't turning them all off. Nah, nah, we can, we can nah, hit it. Keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Okay. Casting over rug comes to the No Ideas original platform. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for pulling up. I Yo, appreciate the interest. The, um, so here's the thing. Like, usually I start these interviews off by asking people, like, for, like, historical information about them, like, where they from and how they grew up. Um, we going to get to that. But... What I wanted to ask you is, I, I, you know, I see you active on social media. I don't know if you've been following or you see the, um, this dialogue going on with um, MC Shah Rock and Frankie Cutlass. Are you, have you seen this thing? Like, no, I, I haven't seen anything recent. I, you know, I'm familiar with both of their platforms, but they have some kind of a wedge between them right now or something. So, so, so here's, what's, here's what's been going on, right? So um, Frankie Cutlass, you know, is, is well known for... The record of Puerto Rico, ho, ho, Puerto Rico, and he's been getting even more. Like I guess you know, with the Puerto Rican Puerto Rican Day Parade recently being here, you know, it's resurfaced, and he was get, given a war by like Mayor Adams or whatever. But the original gentleman, which is his name, is Master Rob, that he sampled that from on a mixtape, hmm. has come forward and he's like, "Yo, those are my vocals." That you got going on for that sample and i didn't, i didn't get no publishing i got no credit i got nothing i got no compensation for it and Sha rock has kind of become like the mediator um between them hmm. to try to resolve whatever this this issue is so when you i guess when you get a chance if you can like go just go look at it but it made me think about like um you know like even from artists of of um of your generation because you know you guys were like more like the 80s so i, I wouldn't say you were first generation but more so like the second generation Wait, right. and i'm just i'm just wondering what your thoughts are as it relates to um an artist being sampled and not being compensated for the sample even on a level if, if the artist was just a, a mixtape artist like if it was the the treacherous three or furious five and they was they did a park jam and somebody happened to get a, a hold of the tape and sampled it and put it on the record what's what's your opinion on something like that mm, back in the days man i mean we you would get shunned from the business because, you know, we had we had things that we stood behind, like Beat Biter, Dope Style Taker. We, we're not having that. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. see somebody selling a CD without join on in on the street. We oh. might beat you up on the street and go to jail for, you know, d d dismembering you and the CDs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, I, there's, there's no place for it in hip hop. Emulation, uh, uh, none of that whatsoever. That's why I don't respect the game now. Mm, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, and um, Frank, you see, frankly, Cutler's position on it, just so you guys can be clear, is and I don't know if Rob, you follow this, I was talking to Ken about it, but that Frankie Cutler's is saying that he never got paid off the record, and that it's more so the record labels <laughs> issue <laughs> to, to, to procure those funds for Master Rob. Yo, these people right now in their twilights of their life, right now, you know what I'm saying? They in their silver years, they looking for every dime they can get. Mm -hmm. There was no money in hip hop. But back then, if you were doing it for money, you, you was not getting the wicker. There was no money. It was all about street cred and love. Now, if they're crying for money now, I can understand that. But it's more about just maybe acknowledgement. Because a lot of times these days, people crying out just for being acknowledged again because they're not getting any of that that life that they had from the from the past, and they're not right. being recognized now. Right. No one's keeping things alive. And then when someone is using something or is using their likeness or if they're they're using their, their music and if they're not getting credit for it, of course, they're going to feel like they're owed something. But Two things came out of this. So um, one being that I guess Frankie Cutlass said that he would be willing to compensate master rob for it in the form of you know like if they if there was paperwork involved and everything i think he had agreed that he would give him ten thousand dollars but master rob felt like frankie cutlass wasn't moving fast enough and he wanted it to be you know he wanted it to be nice neat signed off contractual and everything um so it kind of left it kind of left on frankie cutlass saying like yo you you know you brought this to the internet so now you could go through my attorney kind of thing or whatever um, and then the other part of this is I think about also is I think about like it seems like in any industry, being one of the first people through the door 
you don't the compensation doesn't look like what it looks like later on but here's, nice. here's the funny thing about hip-hop though like the evolution of hip-hop like you said like originally people were in it for the love the street cred and all that but now we've gotten to a place in hip-hop where if you look at like with streaming services and stuff like that or whatever like yeah there's mo there's monetization in it but the monetization seems to be like in show merch and stuff like that like actually selling music doesn't seem lucrative anymore so what is it about like the hip-hop industry that you know rather than the continuum being linear in terms of like you know profit, progression profit, profit mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever that is when profit 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 hold on they're making too much back 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 down yeah. kind of thing like what's what do you think of that well you see the problem is hip-hop is not in the right hands because initially it was a voice it was a form, it was a platform for for the inner cities to get out all the oppression all the stuff that they were being, you know, deprived of, um, just you know, ways of life, just trying to survive in, in the streets. That that would what, what hip hop was. Well, hip hop is a culture. The music of hip hop was to express that culture. You know what I'm saying? So when the when, when the big money machine, when the business machine took over the model, they they sourced out all of of the essence and the organicness of hip hop, and just used the monetarized monetization of it to to to, to capitalize on its a lore and we know they never thought hip hop was going to go anywhere until it actually yeah. was actually going somewhere mm -hmm. and then at that point it was moving so fast they had to find a model to take over and implement their control system and so mm -hmm. they they remove the the way how we dist distributed the music ourselves we did it organically did grassroots to the back of our trunks and in, in our cars mm -hmm. on the streets on on hip-hop college radio shows it wasn't even mm -hmm. on major radio yet right. you know what i'm saying and now the only way you can hear true organic hip-hop is those same forms again because everything else is cookie cutter microwave whatever is the hottest thing out now emulated package it up, make sure it's not too positive because keep in mind now, there's a social engineering aspect to this, okay? So you're, looking at, you're looking at the byproduct of two generations of hip hop that has made and constructed the way we think, dress, speak, yeah. feel, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. our children, children's children are raised off of hip hop now. So right. they know this. Right. We don't have any controlling aspect of the thing we created. We don't own any distribution plants. We don't right. own any record companies. We got BET. We already know BET ain't owned by nobody. Black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But everybody there is black. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, right there, right? And everything on the show is black, right? Mm -hmm. on, so we got to get back to let them have this version of hip hop mm -hmm. because it's not hip. I call it hip pop. It's popular hit um rap it's not what's meaningful rap it's not what the essence of rap is you know yeah. what i'm saying it, it's about getting your side of the struggle out or maybe mm -hmm. going through the sh struggle and showing them that this is my side of the pleasure it's not about killing each other it's not about dominating each other it's not about how much you can take over and burn out it's not about promoting pharmaceutical products it's not about promoting brands of clothes it's not about none of we used to promote our own brands of clothes we right. used to have our own names on the backs of the jeans you know what i'm saying yeah. our buckles had our names you know right. what i'm saying we branded our ourselves that's right our rings had our yeah. names yes. <laughs> had, we, had, we had the um the, the shirt kings to draw a character trail yeah. itself on my and mm -hmm. rocking that shirt but now yeah. we only find value in other things we don't find value in the stuff we created you know yeah. it was dope and i heard large professor say this he said i remember a time when we seen each other, we exalted one each other, one another. Yeah. Peace, God. What's up, son? Like, even yeah. though those words might have been maybe a little extravagant, but we weren't calling each other niggas. We weren't calling each other yeah. anything degraded. We was telling each other how proud we are. What's up, great mind? Things like that to expand right. our expression and what we was going through. And that's a yeah. key point. I like when you said the feel of it, because that's what's gone. The feel, mm -hmm. the soul, soul is yeah. out of here, bro. And it's mm -hmm. missing. And I go back to Sia, you remember this, I'm, and Sia too, when we was at Jay Supreme Studio, he's like, not for nothing, 
But Puffy had us dancing. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit. We was at least dancing when mm-hmm. we heard some of the shit he came out with. And that kept a party going. And I remember that time. Even back with Cassie, when y'all guys was doing it, y'all music kept us on the dance floor. Yeah. It was like aerobic music. B- the BPM was like one twenty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you just you all day. And I kept you going at the end of the day. It felt good that you went to a party. You danced. You might have met a girl. It was nostalgic. Now mm-hmm. you don't want to hear it. Or sometimes you get inundated with hearing negative shit, and you find yourself repeating the shit. Mm-hmm. It, totally even, agree. It might sound good, but yeah. that's what music does. It's totally. melodic. It's, yep. It has that frequency to keep you lullabying and saying the weird shit. I remember I, I used to sing Laffy Taffy too. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Why was I singing that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but to your point. It, it shifted systems into someone else's hands, and now they're the curators of it, and you see the results of it. Mm-hmm. And here mm-hmm. we are. You know yep. I mean? And you know, just let, if I just may add on that too, there's a science behind it as well, because you know, it, it turned from an analog base um, format to a digital, digitized base format. And we already know that you lose a lot of with digitized. You know, music, you lose a lot of the 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 essence of the true sound, right. and, you know, and and when it, when it's recorded on vinyl, when it's co- recorded on acetate, when it's on magnetic magnetized tapes and stuff like that, it has a different soul, a different feel to it. You yes, can sir. hear it. You know what I'm saying? This stuff now is just is, it has. I don't. It doesn't even feel like music. It's nothing harmonic. It sounds more demonic, to be honest with you. It's wow. um, it's it's George Lucas manufactured. It's IMAX. It's no, right, <laughs> right. Well, you know, again, like to speak it's to the, the it's 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 like it's now we have filters that actually put pops and so on. Put pops and warm mm-hmm. the music. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. robotic because you no, know, the warmth is gone or something. So, what's 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 interesting about the the whole thing and even with, with you guys, like you guys had a show. Like I watched watch this stuff. You guys had it was a performance. It was like. It was a thing to see and a thing to go to. Now it's like you got a guy up there with 12 other dudes standing there yelling, just walking back and forth, maybe <laughs> and a bunch of people just doing a bunch of stuff that nobody cares about in the background. Right, I mean, rhyming on type top of soundtrack on tracks that got their vocals on it already, right? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. so terrible. I hate hearing the that. Worst. The worst. No, yeah. I, I know I feel you with that. And you know, when you think about it, the the, the main two things are gone. The dancer and the DJ. You yeah, don't even yeah. see any of that. And you don't see any routines, really. Only yeah. time you see kind of routines is the females incorporated in their stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes they do it. But right. a lot of times, these, these cats dance. They're doing, the stu- you know, they're doing the stupid freestyle dance and all together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's doing it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, there's nothing co- coordinated in something. Mm-hmm. And the DJ is gone. I don't even see a DJ in the show. Do you know where the DJ's at? He's the house DJ up in, on the th- third balcony. And, you know, and he's probably in control of the lights as well. That's what the <laughs> DJ is now. You know what I'm saying? Engineer. Or, 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 or the DJ. Board operators, right? Like, the DJ yeah. just responsible for hitting the button to queue up the track yeah. in the Serato. That is it. Um, so you got you guys, you grew up in Astoria, correct? Um, well, me and Soup together, yeah. I, I, I grew up on the Lower East Side of Manhattan before I moved okay. to um, Jamaica, Queens with Grandma. Okay. And I went to um, elementary school, you know, and then I went to um, elementary school when I went to, um, I mean, excuse me, med- intermediate school, which was a story. I was 12 years old. So oh, I was 12 okay. in a story. That's when I got all the hip hop. Okay, so um, that's it's funny because I was thinking about it. I'm like, all right, you have Astoria, you have Queensbridge, and around that same time in Queensbridge, Marley was on fire. Like Marley was on fire. So how yeah. important was it for you guys to create a different identity than what Marley Moore and the Juice Crew was doing? Well, you got to realize in my, my the projects I grew up with, Astoria projects, story houses, or whatever you want to call it. It was just like um, the bridge. It was just it, it was a hot bed of hip hop. There used to be jams in the park. The people that used to meet up in River Park and Queensbridge used to meet up in um, Kifu Park and the story. They used to build a story. Used to be called a, um, a la project. So there was also also righteous five percenters was out there building at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So so it was a hotbed of culture 
that I grew up in. So I was very fortunate to be around the Disco Twins, seeing them spinning, nice. DJ Hollywood. Um, Hollywood. I, I've seen, I've seen, um, I've seen break dancers. I mean, I've seen every element of hip hop when I was the youngest age. You know what I'm saying? In right. Astoria, and yeah. I remember being outside in the hood, hearing mixtapes. I'm hearing Cold Crush. I'm hearing. You know what I'm saying? I'm hearing Treacherous 3. So all of that stuff I was hearing, I'm also starting to hear it in the jams in the park because I didn't have to travel across, you know, the city to go to jam at a park. It was right outside my window. Right. Mom Dukes used to hear me sneaking out the house. Where you middle of the man? night, 1130. I see. I hear the, the. I hear them plugging in. You can hear it when you, they plugging <laughs> the in the electricity pole. into the light pole. Yeah. The light yeah. here, the, the feedback. Did yeah. some lights come on? I said, oh, yep, about to sneak out the night. <laughs> go run right down that, the soup's house, and we go right over and hang out and jump in on the monkey bars, swinging around like a bunch of young kids Yo. around around the 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 evolution of hip-hop, around the, the, the infancy of hip-hop, bro. Yeah. I am so blessed and fortunate to know the realness of what it went when it came from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean. I, I know like the, the real the, the 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 true the true spirit started with DJ Flowers, the master of the disco blends from, right. from Brooklyn. Right, and right. and then all the you know the DJs around the, the triborough, you know, they started to pick up techniques, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the grandmasters came after that. Mm -hmm. And then you know they incorporated hip hop trying to you know catch the breaks on the loops and then the MCs came mm -hmm. after the DJ. All right. You know, establish a technique to to keep things looping for MC to want to move the crowd with them because it was really about the DJ first. It wasn't it had yep. nothing to do with an MC. Yeah, MC came much later on. Yeah, I'm DJ, sorry, DJ. I got off a tangent. My bad. No, yes, that's, right. that's good. That's, that's good. Yeah, well, it, it, that's it's funny you said what you said though, because the DJ he was the most important one. He had the equipment. He had the speakers. And he I, had the records. <laughs> we didn't have. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> and a lot of you know that's from that that was from that seventy seven blackout when them niggas is they ran and started running in certain shops and walking out with certain <laughs> things. We'll hear that story for another time. Changed the whole game, I, and, and you and you had to be a real nice DJ back in the days because it wasn't no full yeah. records being played. You know what I'm saying? You was if you were doing hip hop stuff, you was catching loops and spinning back certain things and mm -hmm. making sure you knew what was the dope joints to play. So you, you know, know over you know, like a fat man, yeah. you know, things like that, you know, to keep the crowd going and then catch a groove and catch a break. And then if you had an MC, he would help move the crowd with you. And then, yeah. they, then you would have the beatbox come in like a, a, a beatbox dude or maybe like a Sinsonic drum set or Dr. Rhythm or something. And then it mm -hmm. turned into rolling samples and then it turned into, right. you see how it evolved, then it turned into tw M SP-1200 yeah. and yep. it turned in, you see how it just evolved over time. Yeah. Instead of yeah. instead of the DJ spinning it back, now you got a machine that's catching the loop for you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So as, to, as technology advances, it also dumbs us down as well. Yeah. 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 I know one thing that we cherished back in the day. What's your opinion on how important back then were talent shows? Oh, yeah. I, I, I equate it to the same thing with record companies. You used to have artist development. You used to have creative control. Like, you wouldn't be able to just come out with some whack shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you knew you had to represent yourself, so you wanted to put out yeah. your best and, effort. And you representing the culture. And the culture yeah. wouldn't let you come out with no whack stuff either. You know, they would speak up about it. You know what I'm saying? So, so um, yeah, the, 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 the talent shows were definitely important because you got a chance to, to see what your contemporaries were doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that you can come out with all of the stuff you used to rehearse in, in, in front of the mirror and all them dance moves you were practicing. Yeah. You finally had a chance to, to maybe display it and see if you, you, you had something. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And then we would build off each other. Because like a lot of the initial stuff... Talent shows back then were actually the jams. People come to the jam and then they do a freestyle and then they do their freestyle and they both freestyle and okay, I'll see y'all next week. And they keep meeting up and then yeah. they became like a, a, a conglomerate dance, together. It became a dance mm -hmm. competition. It's in, it's a dan then everything is freestyle. Yeah. Everybody just freestyle, like showing what they got. So right. that, that was like a gumbo of talent show in itself. But the talent mm -hmm. shows were definitely needed outside of the inner cities because the inner city was the way that we can all come together in a community center, jams in a park, yeah. and, and, and express it together. But 
Mm. The outside of the city, they were just hearing reverberations. They were hearing echoes of it. They didn't know the essence of what we were dealing with until actually it became worldwide. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of this true essence of hip hop is lost because it but wasn't it's like that. It, 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 it's, it's, it's forgotten. And you got to think about it. The, the, who started hip hop? The DJ. The DJ. So who yeah. should keep it alive? The DJ. The, DJ. yeah. the DJs had lost the touch. They yeah. have lost the the control. Who's the first person to hear music? That's right. The they were breaking, they were breaking and who's the first person that you hear it from? That's yeah, right. they break a record. Yeah. So yeah. what are they doing? Why are they breaking this? Somebody's paying somebody off. Oh yeah. Somebody's in bed with somebody. Somebody ego. Something's going on, and it shouldn't be that much control. It should mm -hmm. not be that much control of the industry. We should have a whole in we should have a whole internet radio radio. We have we should have like nine rap shows on the radio. It shouldn't be just two channels for you to hear some rap, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. commercialized rap only commercialized rap. Yeah. As, yeah. as popular as it is now, come on, bro. Yeah. So something's going on, man, and and it's very disturbing. It, it should go back to the talent shows, bro. Those are sorely needed right now. And, yeah. and, and what I liked about them, because I was a part of talent shows, I did shows as well. It brought out the creativity, which is lacking in our children, too, because the form of expression, you allowed your child to come up with a routine. You know how many girls mm -hmm. came up with routines? And no girl's routine was the same as the other girl's routine. So they really put their effort in the shit. And the mm -hmm. same thing goes for whoever had a rhyme at that time. Your rhyme was not like the other person's rhyme. So mm -hmm. that was the start of development, and it made it easier for A&R's lady because people already knew what they were doing. You know what I'm saying? That was pre-A&R time. You know what I mean? And, totally you know, agree. Here we totally are. agree. And, you know, when you when you think about those talent shows, you know, it helps people establish self-esteem, confidence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, yeah. these people, you can't even criticize nobody no more. They ready to kill you or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, that track's all right. What you mean? You said my track's all right? I'll kill you, nigga. <laughs> Damn, bro. It's a track. It's a you it's like a That's it. Relax, bro. You did, they, people think you're trying to bring down their empire or something the way they talking now, bro. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. You you come from the what was what by by all accounts is the golden era of rap. Now, 1988 was like the the tipping point of what's in, of all of it. What's in, was it uh, just what was it like at that time in that year? You know, with everybody doing all the things and everybody making those type of moves in '88. What do you remember from '88, bro? If it, I. <laughs> There's no other, I can't even, there's nothing that can equate to the magnitude of the amount of music and the amount of classicness. Right. I mean, you you can take out like 10 artists out of that 88 period and still have like a plethora of abundance of classical hip hop. So many, I mean, mm -hmm. so many groups, so, mm -hmm. so many styles came out, mm -hmm. so many genres of hip hop. I mean, you got to think about the dance records that came out. You had conscious rap. You had yeah. you had Afrocentrics. I mean, you had almost a, a eclectic mix of every representation yeah. of our culture come out in one year. In one you know what year. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, Yo, I, I'm, I'm looking. I don't mean to cut your wisdom, but I'm looking at a list of 47 songs that we all know in '87, <laughs> and none of them sound alike, but they're all hot joints. 47. Yeah. This, can you, going, yeah, just going, name, I'm just curious. Name me ten real quick. Go way back, just ice. Public enemy, uh, public enemy number one. I know I got soul, rock Eric B and Rock Kim. The dope man, NWA in 1987. I ain't no joke. Eric B and Rock Kim. I'm bad. LL Cool J. Um Cinder, Cinderella, Dana Dane. Look at that storytelling. We had so much stuff yeah. going on, bro. Move the crowd. The bridge is over. I know we got a lot of queens, people that listen. I ain't want to put that out. <laughs> queens get the money. <laughs> <laughs> bro, there were so many joints, man. I mean, that time, 87, I think I was about 15, was probably one of the best times. Of something. I used to call 87 my favorite year. That's when I really started learning playing basketball. I was getting into my chasing girl era, the music, 
I had a little bit of fresh. My sneakers was always clean. I was in, I was I was in that prime time, and the music carried me. So I wasn't I wasn't on no corners like that. But what carried me was the music. It sent me to the park. It sent me to a girl's house. It sent mm-hmm. me to parties, and that's how I lined up. Eighty seven was one of the best years ever. Yeah, because you know, because the music was tapping into our true <laughs> essence, bro. Cause yeah. it, it was speaking for us, you know what I'm saying? Like you started to become hip hop. Sometimes you don't even need music. You could just be walking down the street on beat. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. you respond to somebody with a verse from a song. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. how hip hop is. Sometimes it's just part of our core nature. And when you feel connected to something like that, it opens yeah. up everything in your life, man. Like everything feels right. Everything feels natural. Cause it's supposed to be. Mm. And, so that's when- what, and that's why that's what makes it golden. You know what I'm saying? That's why it, it stands out more than any other era because it was the truest. Mm. So I, I almost did. I'm, I mean, because I mean, because yeah. I just want to let this one out. I almost got mad at KRS One for doing the bridges over because you know why? The bridge was hot. <laughs> you heard that? The bridge, the Queens Bridge. You can hear that shit from blocks. Yeah, ways to bounce off a wall. <laughs> When that come in, when you hear that, that screaming part of it, whatever that siren nonsense is. Oh my God, the bridge yo. was over, and I was like, well, damn, I'm from the Bronx. I got to rep. And that shit was hot as hell, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was dope. You had to rep Queens. You couldn't even like that joint. Or you had to like it on the low. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Better not play that at no Queens party. <laughs> yo, I'm, um, just, I'm thinking about ISO. How'd you guys end up? getting like your, your first deal with Electra, Like, was it a situation where when y'all started doing the music, you was like, yo, we trying to get on? Or was it just like, yo, we on, you know, we just, we, we going to do some music. I'm just going to run it down. I'm just going to run it down for you real quick. Um, mm-hmm. Me and Stoop wasn't always down with each other. We were always friends, best friends, like since day one. But mm-hmm. we were always in competition with everything, girls, uh, sports, music. So I started um, working at a studio, 1212, and I used to do, just to bring my demos, do my demos at 1212 with Paul C. That's why I learned all my production oh, wow. stuff from Paul yeah. C. But I was doing the stuff there to get prepared for the talent show at um, Ro- um, USA Roller Skating Rink in, in okay. um, Flushing, New York, right? Mm-hmm. In Flushing, Queens. I remember that spot. And um, one of the contests there, the winner would be a member of the Juice Crew. So the winner ended up being Master Ace. Mm-hmm. Super, oh, yeah, super. Right. Soup came in second place, I think, or third. So he could have been in the Juice Crew. That's the I, and wow. I, I came in fourth place. I could have been in the Juice Crew. Who could have? <laughs> it could have been crazy. You know, people don't even know how much I like kind of spit because I do spit, but I, yeah. I'm, I, we kind of stay with our strengths. I'm more strong on the music production side. Yeah, Soup obviously is a, a lyrical, you know, his lyrical yeah, prowess is yeah. amazing. So we yeah. so we just got behind our strengths, which made it sense, and I, it worked for us. But mm-hmm. when we when we got in that contest, since we didn't win, somebody saw us DNA, which was David Nelson Askew. That's the guy that mm-hmm. was the first person to sign us to an independent re- record label, which was DNA Records. Okay. okay. And he said, "Are oh, you guys a group?" We said, "No," because my name was DJ Rudd. Mm-hmm. And soup was super lover C. He said DJ Rudd, super lover C. Eh, don't have it. So I, Don Juan Rudd, eh, <laughs> Romeo Rudd, ha. Huh? But there was a dude named Romeo. I think um, Irv Gotti had a dude he was working with named Romeo at some point. Okay. And he was in the contest. He came in second, actually. Romeo came in second. Mm. And so I said, eh, Casanova, boom, ding, ding, ding. That stood out. So I used Casanova. We, we, um, the dude of James. Sample was my yeah. sample. That was your sample. And wow. and the um and the and the other one um uh you said a bad word was soup sample. Okay. And his soup was gonna do that, and I was gonna do the James, and we, we traded samples for yeah. us to battle each other. So instead of us battling each other, we end up being super love C and casting over Rudd and <laughs> end up using both of those songs for do mm-hmm. the James was blues and pants with impeach the president yeah. and and you said a bad word with um some chops from that same song was super casting over and those were with the a and b sides for stuff it's crazy bro yeah. it's crazy bro how things yeah. turn out and then um we got signed to um 
Mercury Records, Mercury Polydor, which was ironic because, pardon me for a minute, I apologize. Mm -hmm. Mercury Polydor, we all know who used to be on Mercury Polydor, mm -hmm. James Brown. Yeah. So it was symbolic for us. I almost even had them put our faces on the label, just like the way James Brown James used to Brown. put his face on the yeah. label. But guess what yeah. happened? The staff that hired us at Mercury got fired. The whole staff. Oh, wow. mm. So all the projects got dropped. Two weeks later, Electra Records picked us up. Um, Raul mm. Roach signed us. Okay. At, um, Cynthia, um, Cynthia Rohn. Yeah. Got her name. Sylvia Rohn? Sylvia. Damn, Sylvia. how can I forget yeah. Sylvia? Sylvia was a catalyst mm -hmm. for that for us. And um, we were the second major act signed to Electra. That was hip hop. Sugar Hill was the first. Yeah, what's, what's bug about that is so damn like, yo, that mean y'all had to definitely be on the radar if you get dropped and then two weeks later they pick was, you up. They definitely had to see something. Yo, was the project already finished or you just had those couple of records? It was the couple of records, the word of mouth on the street, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, the synergy just kept picking up. It wasn't, nothing was dying down. And I think, like you mentioned, you remember seeing us on shows or seeing how the shows was what really kept us like yeah. in, in the forefront of stuff because we didn't mm -hmm. have no videos and the magazines kind of helped us a little bit too because they didn't have a face to Super Lover seeing Casting Over Rudd, so they saw us in Word Up magazine and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. So when they started to see all of those things come into play, then I guess they seen some viability and they they picked us up. But Mercury was really the first one to, to pick up the independent, and they mm. was going to take a chance on us first. But then, now, now, yeah. now back there, back then, you put your name, you signed your name to that deal. Did you think back then when you signed your name? To that record deal that hip hop would be what it is today. Um whether whether when we talk about whether hip hop to you is good, bad, or indifferent, I'm talking about just well, what it is. Like that, when that, when, that when I when I was like in it, mm -hmm. there wasn't even no rap charts. You know what I'm saying? They didn't even have a genre, like a lane for it. It was just put into popular music, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it it had its own identity, but it didn't have its own um Okay, I guess uh, money viability yet. So like, oh. like they wouldn't get behind it yet. You know what I'm saying? That's why you didn't see a lot of stuff promoted on like MTV and and, and you didn't see a lot of rap music. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You see a lot probably of probably believe it was sustainable. Exactly. So, yeah. but as as time, because like you even mentioned, we were the second school, or like just before the second school, like we came at mm -hmm. the tail end of the first school. Yeah. And we were like kind of the lead ends of the second school. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we were in the turn of the technology because it went from that, you know, live band feel. Because we yeah. was people were playing bass lines and live bands in the studio before they was yeah. chopping up samples in the yeah. studio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of were doing the turn of the time technology wise. So we, we were fortunate in that aspect of it. And that's when it really started to take off because it was easier to, to, rep, to reproduce in the studio. You know what I'm saying? All of those spinning back, all of those loops you had to, to synchronize, all those tapes you had to splice up to, to keep it. You didn't have to do that anymore. Yeah. And then you can synchronize it. And how much I got? I got $100. I could do this in three hours now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, so right, right. so things became uh, the formula worked. So as the mm -hmm. formula became more refined, the, uh, so did the music. And, and But as things get more refined, then you lose base and you lose control of it you know it becomes his own monster his own animal right and, you know what i'm saying oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, it, yeah the other thing i was gonna say though is that like you know like your, your earlier records had like a lot of popular samples also like what did sample clearance look like back then i mean sample because bismarck he is the person who really brought that to the forefront after they he got so you know the irony of it all i'm you know biz is my man i was in the studio with biz when he recorded those records when he um you got wow. when i need yeah. I, I, he he asked me your word how you how you like this he had a brown pool of spit that's sitting right here <laughs> <laughs> your word <laughs> How you feel about this right here? I said, nigga, just hurry up, record that shit. We got our session next. We was cool like that. But yo, as soon as I heard that shit, I said, I knew that shit was going to be fire. You know what I'm saying? But the same thing with De La Soul. Yep. Right? Bismarck. And I think there was one other group. See, no one was getting sued because no one was making money. Mm -hmm. So why would you sue somebody? It costs money to, to get a lawyer to sue somebody to get nothing. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? But yeah. as the technology changed, as it became more refined <laughs> and become became more viable for for the industry to make money and profit mm -hmm. profit off of it, then that's when all the people that should get paid for a sample Yo, clearances you, 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 know, you, ever see, you ever see a king of New York? Where we said if a nickel bag a nickel bag is sold in the park, oh, I, don't want I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I I gotta get part of it. Yeah, yeah. But you see. If it wasn't for hip hop, a lot of these old um, musicians wouldn't have a, a pot to piss in right now. Yeah. So they're kind of lucky. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, they should be grateful for hip hop. Yeah, they yeah. should be embracing. That's what I was telling somebody yesterday. They should be embracing it. Like some of them are back on tour because of hip hop. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. they, sample, they should be talking about it. Yeah, that's my song. You know, they did it. Help. They should be helping you sell a song to get themselves going. <laughs> totally agree. Right. Mm. That's a fact, bro. Yo, that, Yo, you guys are ill, man. I like the show, man. That shit is dope. Man. Your, 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 your ear, thank you, bro. Your ear for Duda James had to be some DJ shit. Cause I was like, I think I heard that damn song 87, 88, 89. Uh, every party. <laughs> bro, I, I can't I cannot take full credit of Duda James though. Cause soup, soup, that's soup's baby, because he wanted blues and pants. He wanted yeah, that from me. You know what I'm saying? I was gonna use the sample, but he already he already had the dirty version of In Peace the President, the one that yeah. sounded like he was scraping somebody over some yeah. hot coals. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what's so funny? It has so much um, life in it, we kept it. Because we could have easily bought another, you know, break record and cleaned it mm -hmm. up. It didn't sound the same clean. And you noticed it because our, our original version of Duda James had the reverb, you know, with Paul yeah. C yeah. recorded in 1212. But when Paul C was booked, we couldn't record the album there. We went to um Green Street Studio and recorded the rest of the album in Green Street, yeah. and we remixed it or we we used the same masters without the EQ mm -hmm. and we took out the um the impeached president with yeah. the um the scratches and it doesn't sound nothing like it. Wow, it, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. The studio is called Twelve Twelve. That's my hey, birthday. I got a, I got a funny story for you, man. You gonna you gonna love this one. Okay, now, I was in high school, right? Listen, we used to listen some, you know, you buy your tapes and different stuff, right? And then you go out and like, you know, everybody don't have all that money to buy every single tape. Mm -hmm. So in high school, I traded my kid Capri tape for your tape. For your <laughs> album. Smart old, my J Smart yeah, old. I, yeah, I, Classic. I traded <laughs> traded it for yours. So I bet yeah, you I, he, I bet you he's looking for you right now to get it back right now, my chick. <laughs> I <laughs> definitely <laughs> did. <I'm> like, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, do you regret it? No, no, I didn't regret it at all. Excellent, excellent. Oh, oh, cassette man. tapes, bro. Cassette tape shit. Yeah. Oh, trade, trade cassette tape. So, so you, got, if you got one now, you're good, bro. You got a good one now, you're good. Oh, yeah, you can. You can find that. Then joints is like collector's items to get a, a yeah, tape yeah. player. So, the tra walk us through the transition from you, you, you're on Electra, and then after Electra, Electra, you guys go to Stu Fine, right? Well, on um, Wild Pitch, like what, what happened with Electra that made you transition? To wild pitch and still fine. Well, you know, unfortunately, Paul C was murdered, and mm -hmm. um, we were working on our second album during the time he was murdered, mm -hmm. and um, we kind of we got dropped by the label, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of the people, you know how how um, influential Paul C was to the industry, you know how many people he worked mm -hmm. with, and so. Was, move, your, move your microphone down so we can oh, hear you. My bad. I forgot I moved it up to blow my snap box. I apologize. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough that Paul was murdered. And, yeah. But it was, it was that murder was tough on us, too, because we people thought we were the cause of it or part of it. Wow. You know, after time, you know, things came out. They, you know, we were vindicated. Yeah, and, had nothing uh, to do with it. And, uh, yeah. But, you know, all the damage is done now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So a lot of people that didn't want to work, that was working with us, didn't want to work with us. A lot of people that, you know, um, were booking shows for us, didn't book shows for us anymore. Wow. So, and, you know, and even some people on the street, you know, heard that there was a hit out on us. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So it was a it was a tough time to get through, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, just like anything, it either you succumb to it or you, you, you it makes you strong and you build from it, right? Yeah. Right, right. So, you know, we got through it. Um, someone took a chance on I guess, you know, we still had a name. Uh, Stu Fine and Amy Fine, two Jewish people, which I respected. 
Mm -hmm. Um, They definitely loved hip hop. So it wasn't like they were in it just for the money, Mm -hmm. but they were too controlling. They were more like Mm -hmm. they wanted the hands on. They wanted to feel like they they put their imprint on the creation process, which Mm -hmm. that's that's what tempered our um, project to a certain degree, because it was a lot of things we wanted to do ourselves, but we were kind of stifled hold with what he wanted us how how he wanted us to present ourselves. And there's some um there's a um little known fact um the video there was a video that we did for um two of the songs. One was Gigolo and the other one was Romeo. Mm. Who produced Romeo? Uh that was Paul C. That was a Paul C production. Mm. That was um he he only produced some people think Paul produced us, but Paul just crafted our style. Right? Yeah. He was our engineer. But um, he but he was the one that taught me how to produce so hmm. i guess you could say he was the catalyst for most of our stuff but hmm. when it came to um to the the Stu fine stuff i did it in um power play studios with um anton pushansky same people that used to work with mob deep and um a couple other people mm-hmm. and um the project was solid but it seemed like he used to go back into the studio and work on it without us oh wow and then work on my art without me and i'm the artist and then at some point he hired um what's his name again hype the the film producer hype Hype williams Williams. Williams, yeah um he had shot a video for something right and it was on super eight nothing was ever shot on super eight before bro no hip-hop video never ever ever (laughs) <laughs> they looked at it and said, oh, it looks too different. I don't like it. It's too clean. <laughs> so that never came more. out. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a video somewhere right now that Hype Williams did for us that ain't come out. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm kind of old in the gray matter, you know, Zaza, <laughs> all that shit. Yeah. You know. Yo, hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. So we talk about Stu Fine and Wild Pitch, and it's interesting that you would say, like, yo, they love hip hop. Because if you think about the people that were on Wild Pitch, that Wild Pitch had Gangstar at one point, Wild Pitch had Lil Finesse, Wild Pitch had OC, Wild Pitch had you got yo, Wang Source. So, yeah. Yeah. Source. Like, yo, this you, they even had the female routine. Yo, what was their names it? again? Um, damn. I forgot their name. I'm gonna get it back. Yo, you know what I'm but, talking about too. I forgot their name. Um, damn. Continue. Yeah, but yeah, like, like yo, Stu. I mean, so this is the first time like I'm really hearing and like I've always heard the name like Stu Fine, Wild Pitch, Stu Fine, Wild Pitch. But hearing you talk about like his involvement in it, I wouldn't imagine that you know that he had that level of involvement. Because any to be honest with you, anytime I ever heard the name Stu Fine, I always heard like yeah, yo. The royal you never got your royalties or what well, I've, I've heard like stories like that or whatever but i didn't know that Stu fine was that invested or involved creatively that after you go and you go in the studio as an artist and create the label owner come behind i'm hearing from the engineer tell me yeah he came back and remixed something yeah I'm, well, I, I don't know how many people he did it to but i know for sure the dude told me he came back to the studio when we wasn't there what was his formal <laughs> training though? Like, cause all I know, Stu Fine is like, like, was he an actual musician, or is he an actual musician? Bro, to be honest with you, I don't really have an idea what what his background is from. You know what I'm saying? But I do know I could guarantee you that he wasn't in it just for the money, cause he seemed like he really loved hip hop. He signed he signed people according to how their spirit was. To be honest, with you, you even had um MC Search A and R. You know oh, what I'm saying? Right. And she really you know for him OC. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> excuse me. So it's just it's just unfortunate that I think because he was white, you know what I'm saying? And because of that controlling aspect of it, you know what I'm saying? We want to this is our thing. And you know, back then we everybody was getting jerked. You know what I'm saying? It's like people yeah. wasn't getting what they were supposed to get. Hearing all these bad stories about people signing to record companies, I just think he got a bad thing. Got a bad um, yeah. a, a bad yeah. write up about a bad rap. Yeah. rap. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, when, so when is the when is the moment? Uh, I'm thinking about like from your era. When when is the moment that as a person who signed a record deal that you be like, damn, I signed this? 
Like when did you did you ever have that epiphany or that that moment where you were like, what the hell did we sign? We just we felt that we had to sign something because we know that the only way you get further is by someone helping you because you couldn't mm -hmm. do it yourself. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Not then. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you wanted to expand on what you were doing, you had to sign to a label. But mm -hmm. if you yeah. didn't, you could just be street celebrity. You know what I'm saying? There's many. How many? We know how many dudes put kids through college off of mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you you didn't have to go that route. And you know, I, I'm glad I did because it was a learning process. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it got us worldwide to a certain aspect. But at the end of the day, maybe I could have did better if I didn't sign. You know, but at that point, we the guinea pigs in the industry because nobody right. knew what the outcome of being signed was. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm mm -hmm. Nobody knew what was going was going to happen. You know. Yeah, yeah. Because I hear I hear stories like sometimes we talk to like artists and I hear stories of what these record deals sound like, and I'm like, damn, I closed on my house with less paperwork <laughs> than when people sign for like 15 albums type thing. It's like. You know, like you hear like horrendous stories, man. Yeah. Like if I if I was if I was to give any artist any advice that's up and coming, and if you had some kind of academic, you know, if you could com command knowledge, I would advise you to take some courses in business or in some mm -hmm. kind of entertainment because it's going to give you some aspect of how to control your your investments right. going forward because so. you can sign something away for life and don't even realize it. You know what yeah. I'm saying, and 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 be and 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 be always regretting and looking back bitter at something because I I know so many bitter artists right now, man. Yeah. So yeah. many people that are tormented by by the people they've been signed to, by the people that they've invested their lives in. You know, because when you're doing this music stuff, it's not just it's not just I'm money, my G. I mean, you got. You, yeah, you lose it, you lose passion. time with your family. Yeah. You lose you lose um time with with people you love. Other people, you know what I'm saying. You lose opportunities that you might have taken advantage of if you yeah. didn't just do this one thing. And right. sometimes when you when it doesn't work out, uh, you're bitter. And it's, and going back to um to 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 Frankie Cutlass, right? Mm -hmm. He's got all the Grammys and shit, right? Yeah. So who's bitter out of that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man, that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Um, so are, you, are you are you working? On now this got now? fired last week. These motherfuckers laid me off after 15 years of building they fucking company. Them bitch ass niggas at King Tile Services. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, can I curse on your format? I apologize yeah, yeah, if yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, fuck them niggas at King Tile. <laughs> All that did is open the door to me building the dynasty out this motherfucker now. Watch what's going to happen in the next couple of months, bros. <laughs> uh, in on it, too. I'm, I'm putting you all in on it next, yo. Watch what That's happens. A That's a segue. So you got to be working on something now, Paul. You look, at, yo, look, I, I am dead ass serious. <laughs> I'm taking over every ass. I have no ego. I'm very humble. But I'm mm -hmm. I'm playing on network. I mean, I'm gonna build a network of people that you ain't gonna have no choice but to want to rock with us. Mm. How about that? Yeah. And no money down. What you got to offer? Plug you in, and that's your return you get back. Oh, you got you got a, a show with advertising. You're gonna get exactly what you're supposed to get back from that. If someone's working on your program, they're gonna get they only did five percent of the. You're gonna get five percent of the work. It's gonna be <laughs> actual. Input and you're gonna get actual output. That is it. Network, real true network. Nobody gonna be getting paid thousands, millions of dollars for just showing up. Not no bullshit like that. It's gonna be actual value in the system. We're gonna be sharing ideas, think tanks. We're gonna be building communities back up. We're gonna be building families back up. Sharing resource knowledge. It's not about just just being entertained, bro. We we got seven days a week, right? Mm -hmm. How many days of the week you supposed to be partying technically? Maybe Friday and Saturday, maybe. <laughs> maybe party sometime Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Do we ever really get back to work? It's a lot of partying around going on, my G. Too much partying going on. It's time to get back to work. And we need to work on this culture again. You know what I'm saying? Because we yeah. lost space. We lost touch. Yo, and so hopefully I can help that. So yeah. um, not to digress, but like um, even listening to you talk, like how do you we, 
because now I'm intrigued. 15 years and they lay you off? Like, what are they? Well, I mean, you know, I I can just, I used to work at a call center. I was a supervisor. You know, I was a trainer, all of that stuff. Built the company up. Venture capitalists came, bought the company. White dude was was put uh, thrusted as, as the president. He saw it as black people running shit. You know what happens when a white person see black people running shit? Yeah. They call the higher up. Yeah, they got too much black shit down here running shit. And <laughs> that's what the fuck happened. Damn. That's wow. what. And also, you know, publishers clearinghouse was one of the people I worked for. They they closed their business down, so they're not they're no longer giving out sweepstakes money. They're just going to scam people now. Make <laughs> you think you won the sweepstakes. They yeah. can send five million dollars so you can receive two. <laughs> <laughs> send a green green dot money card at that. <laughs> now we take it on IG with a picture with money money phone taking a picture like this. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but they, they, yeah, yeah, they let me go. But it's okay though. When one door opens, I mean, no, one door closes and a whole bunch of them open up for you if you want them. Yeah. So probably, I'm not freed, open probably, up. probably freed you up more for whatever. You oh yeah, to. definitely. I, yeah. I, bro, I was a, I was thinking about quitting. Sometimes yeah. it, things force their own hand, bro. To be honest with you, it's time, mm-hmm. bro. I got yeah. tired of surviving, yo. I got to live again. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I ain't definitely I'm enough wrong now. now it's time to put some shit together. Cause there's never enough. Is there ever enough money, bros? No, you never. You'll never have enough. Is there no, enough man, time? No. no. So why even money. worry about none of that shit, bro? Just li- enjoy life. Yeah. Rock yeah. out. If you ain't you, enjoying it, it's not worth it. Yeah, I don't know if you. I don't know if you see. Oh, like, yeah. I see like these clips on IG now where they have like um, yeah, it's like a dude going around and he's asking like older people or older couples like what's something that they um regret from when they're younger, and everybody keeps saying that they spend too much time chasing money when they should have spent more time on relationships and family, and stuff like that. So you yeah. know, like this this may be an opportunity for you to actually pursue whatever your passion is. You know um. And I also think like like what you're saying, like, you know, like to me, words are powerful, you know, what you put in the universe, you definitely get what you know in the universe. So maybe this, you know, a higher powers way of saying like, you know what, Rudd, you you know, you you put in you put in time there, you help them build it up. Now it's time for you to move on. Maybe it's in your, your, your destiny to create your own call center or your own business as it relates to something like that or wherever your passion lies. So for me, it's like when when things like that come up, I think some people kind of get mired in. The negative aspect of it um and then some people you know like unfortunately most of the time it's us people from the hood like we resilient so where there's a will we make a way we figure it out right yeah yep. most definitely you know when you're from the hood you see both sides of the spectrum of energy you see a whole lot of negative but you be seeing a whole lot of positive too so sometimes mm-hmm. when you're only looking in one direction you're missing on the other side of the direction which could be positive right. so right. always always be on the uh, uh, on the elevation of an eagle because it sees over all birds you know what i'm saying Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could be a pigeon, but you only pecking at crumbs down here, nigga. I'm a, I'm an eagle. I see all the birds pecking. Perspective, you got to be on a higher That's perspective. A good That's Same a good birds, higher perspective. That's a good That's a Yo, so you Burn ass, ass niggas. <laughs> yeah. Yo, sure we, we had um we had balls on here from balls and hooks. You know, that's, that's, Mad that's, love for swells. That's my that's, team. Yeah, like, that, that's my guy. Um. And he, you know, we, you know, we do our research for the interviews and we found out that you was, you were Mr. Beat and you helped them, you know, put together that demo. So when did you decide you was going to step out and kind of be like the, the, like the sole producer person? Because I know early in the interview, you was talking about like, you know, your, um, your production contribution to, um, to you guys earlier projects, but when did it become like, I, yo, I want to try to develop and cultivate these other artists. Cause I see you was doing some stuff with your son too, right? Um, I've always, that's my nature. I've always been that since Mm. day one since day one when i didn't have a record deal i was helping the hood when my record deal fell apart i was helping the hood when i had no signs of a record deal when people trying to kill me i was still helping people out you know what i'm Mm -hmm. saying that's my nature i've always had a studio i always had a four track then an eight track then a 12 track then pro tools i've always had something to work on you know what i'm saying and i've always want i i don't know what it is i'm I, i have to be around creativity i need that energy and the youth hip-hop music is a youthful music it's a youthful energy you know what i'm saying and and that and that's what has kept me young to this point and my son i live vicariously through my son now because he kind of does the same thing you know what i'm saying he kind of found his his creative spirit and he does it through more than just music you know what Mm -hmm. i'm saying so it's 
I've always had that that um production producer type mentality. I've mm-hmm. worked with many artists um before bars and hooks from my hood, like um gorgeous gangsters, the people that you know you probably never heard of, but mm-hmm. um they street celebs, you know what I'm saying, from their own hood. So I've always had that in me and someone that um that, um saw uh some talent in bars and hooks brought them to my attention and mm-hmm. someone that had some money to help invest brought his money to my attention so mm-hmm. we took a little bit of you know partnership together mm-hmm. and told him you know we got a spot out of state you know we can um hunker down in and do a whole album for a month or two if you're willing to go down there and record they said yeah we with it so we rented a car drove down to greensboro north carolina and recorded a whole bunch of dope ass motherfucking songs and um and um i did everything from scratch in the studio with them and wow. um kind of talked them techniques so they were kind of raw as um artists but mm-hmm. they they lyric they, they they're dope both lyricists you know what i'm saying both mm-hmm. of them have a different delivery but they have the same type of like upbringing that they had some commonality some some kind of common thread that made them so strong together you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, and yeah. i tried to bring the best out of them and i tried to give them techniques on how to record and after mm-hmm. a time it, it became refined bro i mean people started to really see them like turn into something now yeah, unfortunately yeah. with the way the, the hood is the way we are trying to navigate the hood yeah. I think you see where I'm going at here, right? Yeah. Yeah. The hood gets in the way from yeah. the create. You know, yes, th- those two brothers are two of the most creative brothers I've, I've yeah. was fortunate to work with. Mm-hmm. But the hood mentality kind of got in the way and stifled yeah. the growth of the whole mechanism itself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. it could have went further than when it what it did. But just like anything in life, there's no mistakes as accidents or coincidences right. divine steps in you it looks like we just said it it looks negative but there's some positive aspect that was overlooked so you know what i'm saying so unfortunately prodigy's not here no more to still work with them because i think if prodigy was alive they would they yeah. probably would they would have had a career yeah, yeah. yeah. they would have definitely fact. had a career for sure that's a, that's a fact man um you so guys, I, still, I know I go all over the place. My bad. No, 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 no. This is this is good stuff. You guys still on the um still on the road performing? And if not, why not? Well, my song is 35, 35 years old. So there's really no market for us. You know what I'm saying? Unless someone's requesting for us to be seen, you know what I mean? Right. Um, the people that used to rock with us, man, probably not even alive no more when you think about it, unfortunately. <laughs> And it ain't no DJs keeping us alive, you know. There's no there's no promotion house that that houses old school hip hop artists for promote mm-hmm. to have tours and stuff like that. Plus, there's no insurance to back a tour for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. there's no tour venues that can make enough money for the venue to make money off of us. So it's mm-hmm. a combination of why we're not doing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't have any love for it anymore. I'm I've kind of outgrown hip hop, at least that aspect of it. I have a more mm-hmm. mature look at it now. Yeah. I don't I, I don't want to celebrate in, in old ghosts, and I don't want to bring back bad memories because I'm I, I leave the past in the past. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm not trying to live off of the past either. You know what I'm saying? But if it, if someone wants to do a show and incorporate me into it, I have no problems with it. Mm-hmm. But I don't miss it at all. And yeah. I do ha- I have two shows coming on one August 1st, um, Cretona, Cretona Park in the Bronx. Oh, yeah. 40th, okay. 40th anniversary um, 40th anniversary for um, Chuck Chill Out. August 1st. Um, May need to pull up on you for that. Yeah, yeah, please, sure. yo, please do. I'm pretty sure. Yo, most definitely bring a camera, bro. Live feed, my nigga. You're going to blow up there. Straight up. Yeah. And um, up, if you follow my IG, um, I'm going to probably post it soon on IG. So... And they, anybody's tuned in, just talk, I mean, when you when y'all tune in, just mm-hmm. if you want, um, go to my my page, Casanova Rudd. And it, you see my name, C A S A N O V A R U D, yeah. no space. Yeah. yeah. Anything, no space with the at, you can find everything. Twit, Twitter, 
Twitch. I'm do shit. I'm doing um OnlyFans. I'm doing everything. I'm shaking my ass and I'm just gonna get this money. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mentioned that. I mentioned that because I feel like that. Um, now more and more, I am seeing like like artists come out. You know, from like you guys' generation, and you know, they ain't getting the substantial money for a show, but they get they're getting money for a show, and particularly like overseas, the love overseas is crazy because there's a lot of hip hop purists and yeah. historians that actually embrace the people that you know that potentially in the states that people are like, ah, you know, I don't really want to, you know, I really I don't really want to hear that, and and I say this because like I've gone to a lot of shows, and you know, respectfully, like a lot of older artists. They make the mistake of performing their new material, and I'll be like, I'm yo, that's the last songs. But yeah. I'm like, I need to hear the shit that I grew up <laughs> on. Uh -uh. <laughs> that, that I really, really, I really enjoyed or whatever, yeah. you know. So you have you do have like the artists that circulating around, and one of the things that I really I've noticed as a result of going to like a lot of these um shows is that there are people who back then, like I listened to their music and it felt like their catalog was really vast. But now I listen to it. I'm like, oh, you really only had like one song. <laughs> you know, but you think about you guys, you know, how you call it, and you guys have had, you guys. We at least had three. three. <laughs> you, 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 have songs that you have songs that you could do a set. Right. You could a yeah. bag, and you could be, you know, like you could, there could potentially be a couple of weekends out of the month that y'all could pick up a bag. Yeah. And it could be your second thing. It ain't got to be your main thing because you figure like the brand Nubians are still on. Yeah. Brand new being still out there, nice and smooth is still out there. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, there's a lot of people you'd be surprised are still going around doing shows, and you you know, L just yeah. dropped it about to drop a new album with Q Tip Producer. Bro. Yeah, y'all, now, yeah. now, now, no, I appreciate the acknowledgement, man. Just a little, I, I hear what you're saying, but you know, I have to be honest with myself and just know where I stand in hip hop and my value. I know that we have value, but we weren't crossover as much mainstream as a lot of these artists that are mm -hmm. on these tours right now. Like Rakim is way more popular than Super Lover C and Casting Over Rudd. When you're looking at Big Daddy Kane, popularity, way more popular than Super Lover C and Casting Over Rudd. And I, you know, mm -hmm. and I have to I have to acknowledge that a lot of that is probably based on us having missing, you know, photo ops or like video we didn't right. have a lot of yeah. video yeah. stuff like a, a package of visible stuff for people to right. put the music to mm -hmm. to the group you know what i'm saying a lot yeah. of people don't even know that we had shows like that that mm -hmm. we that we got yeah. busy at shows you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so and there was at one point we was on tour with um public enemy um epmd salt and pepper rob bass we was right. first Mm -hmm. Like two shows later, they say, die, 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 die. Y'all got to put them like like third or fourth yeah. that we can't go in after them. There was dudes that didn't want to perform after us no more. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we would bring yeah. high energy. You was even saying it yourself. Some of our songs is high energy. Yeah. You, know, you got yeah. high. You can dance. We got one of the illest dancers on the it's planet with T Spunk. Yeah. So we got, and then all of a sudden, you got to start doing, you know, bopping your head again. It slows yeah. it down. Yeah. So yeah. people didn't want to compete with that too much. So at some point, they had to switch us up with the shows, but I, I can see us doing more shows. I mean, you know, I can still slide to the left of my, you know, my right knee <laughs> kind of hard to slide it back to the right. Yeah, you gotta put a knee <laughs> put a wheel, <laughs> put a, put a knee on, like, some wheelie sketches on or something, slide around like Usher. <laughs> Dude, you put, a, put a knee brace on, but no, like I'm, I'm serious. Like I think that if you get with like the right booking house, you mm -hmm. know, and 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 you don't make you don't make it like your main thing, but there's there is sort of like still a market for it. like, and I, I'm oh, not yeah. I'm, I'm I'm being respectful. I don't want to say like people shows that I've been to, and I'd be like, damn, bro, you really only had that one record yeah. kind of thing or whatever. But they be like, all right, I'm but I'm leaving here and then I'm going to wherever to do my show or, or do another show, and I'm like, you are you on the road like that or whatever. So it's 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 kind of like the the relationship, like who you tapped in with, and what you yeah. were saying also about like even the photo op stuff. Also, is that I would say the other part of it is like even with the show you got coming up for um the Cretona joint or whatever is I think the more visibility that you you brothers begin to create around it again, then yeah. the demand the will come back. They'd be like, yo, you no. know, super yeah. lover scene, bro. Totally agree. Totally agree. Totally agree. Level, like. Now this put you up on some soup soup as we know he's the like the singer of the band. Do you mm -hmm. need the backup dude to, to come with you when you the lead singer of the band? When you do a shows, when you do a retro uh, tours? I got nah. it. Well, 
Nah, you so, don't. But you unfortunately, so, you know, and me and Soup, no bad blood whatsoever. I even told mm -hmm. him, bro, do as many shows you can, bro. If it's mm -hmm. if I'm stopping it from happening based on money and availability, please don't stop any flow based on me. Got but it. going forward, if that's possible, hopefully I can be incorporated more. But Soup, Soup is doing shows. Soup okay. two shows. He does it around around the um the North Carolina Atlanta you know area more than anything though. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because you need to be like yo the best super lover C casting over Rudd. If I go see Salt and Pepper, I want to see Salt and Pepper. I don't yeah. just want to see Salt. If I go see Kim play, I don't want to see just Kid. I yeah. want to see y'all. I want to see, see the whole group. Like yo, I'm gonna be honest with you. I the saw Black Sheep. Yeah, yeah. I saw Black Sheep, and I couldn't tell you one Mr. Long verse. And Dreads was performing. I was like. Yo, where's Mr. Long at? He had another yeah. dude DJing for him. The DJ yeah. was dope. You know, dressed from Astoria, right? Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, but I was like, yo, I right, so where's Mr. Look? Because you begin, like, our formative experiences with y'all was, yo, this is the group. This is Super Lover C. And right. shit, I'm still looking for Scoob and Scrap when I see Big Daddy Kane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, he got another dancer with him. I'm like, yo, where's Scoob and Scrap at? But yeah. it's just, you know, how you call it? Like, that, the imagery is, is burnt in our heads as, Hip hop right. fans, like yo, this is the group. These are the people. This is it, you know. So if you, if you if you already make like a concerted effort to come back, and again, like it ain't gotta be around new music, and it ain't gotta be around like yo, this is the one thing that we doing. It just gotta be around like yo, we gonna create some visibility. We gonna do some shows. We'll do this. We do that. And you get with the right booking agent. I'm telling you, it's a lot of dudes out here. People going. Matter of fact, when we not recording, I'm gonna tell you some names, and you're gonna be like, yeah. All right. Yeah. You got it. You got it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say the names here because if I say the names here, they may have previously been a guest, or in the future, they may not be a guest. Yeah, as a <laughs> so I ain't gonna say the names here, but when bro, it's like know, a no look pass, bro. All you gotta do is just, yeah. just throw it, but I know you ain't gotta say nothing. I know what you talk about, you know, Alley Oop, my G, Alley Oop. Yeah, yeah, but like, nah, yo, this is there's, there's, there still is definitely, there still definitely is a market, and we talked to um a lot of artists and even like we interviewed master ace love master ace dope lyricist talented brother yeah. and i remember he was, yeah. he was like yo if i do a show in the states he was like i'll be lucky to get like 50 people in the room but he was like i go i go overseas he Bro. was like yo all all my songs they know all of them you know and he even started doing like new music yeah. now he ain't doing the new music for the people in the states he like yo, i'm mm. doing it for my fans abroad and you know, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't i don't know what his financial situation is but I mean, if you could travel with your family, you can make the bread or whatever seem like a win-win <laughs> to me or whatever, you know, I would have to be a millionaire. I'm like, I, you know, I ain't got to work whatever my regular job is. <laughs> but not, yo, you ain't got to put no battery in my back, bro. You just, you already told, I'm going to take advantage of it. I told you I'm about to build an empire again. I'm going to get out here. I'm getting the band back together too, my G. I'm going, I'm going down to Electra Records tomorrow, matter of fact. I'm going to speak to them tomorrow. Yeah, my, you, you had real hits. It's not like, it's not like y'all was out there on some friends trying to get in the game. Like, you, you had real hits. Like, people... He was really checking for y'all. Well, I know, I know. One thing I want to do is re-record everything, like, okay. um, because you know, the one way you can beat, um, getting out of your masters oh, is, if you, is if you is if you re-record them. If you re-record your music, you right. you own the rights to your music again. Yeah, and right. your masters. You know what I'm saying? Because right now they, the 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 contracts are only that it is based on digital distribution contracts yeah. now. I think, mm -hmm. and they don't have rights to. Um, original you? works. Yeah, okay. so, so some, yeah I, get, I get what you're saying. Some no. contractual nonsense, but you can yeah. be getting out of you know getting sued from using your own stuff, which Who is crazy. Did, did, did Taylor Swift do that? Did yeah, yeah. Ashanti. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you know what? The, the yeah. high caller. You've already. It's like what you were saying about you guys' record when you went and redid it over, or oh, <laughs> whatever. You know, because not only that, I think that. The sound is different, and to be honest, be honest with you, as a creator, the feeling was different. Whatever you felt in that moment when you originally recorded it versus mm -hmm. them recording it 15 years later, you know, are you going to be able to capture that same level of emotion? Even 15 yeah. minutes later, because That's sometimes, I, you know, when I was in the studio, when Paul C. taught me how to, you know, engineer and everything, he said, Rudd, whatever you do, always have record on. I don't care what it is, because you never know what, that you might miss something that you should have recorded. 
and mm. never record over something or that's already recorded. You got enough tracks. So, mm. and I've learned that. And there's many times I go, I tell people to, you know, you come to the studio, you're doing that, that song or whatever. And then, then you come back and you're trying to redo it. It doesn't sound, it's never going to sound the same yeah, way yeah. if you keep coming back. So the best thing to do is to find a, like a studio just to get the idea down, mm-hmm. rehearse it as much as you can. Rehearse it so you got it down pat, then go to the studio, studio, record it all there at one time. Because if you keep going back, you're going to try to keep tweaking something. I don't like this. I don't like that. And then you destroy the whole project. So, so you know what? Yeah. What you say in that, it's interesting you said that because now if comparatively look at the music, half these people that's on the same song, some of them never even met each other, let, let alone been in the studio together. Look, you're talking you can, Rob's language now. <laughs> yeah, you can tell the difference too, like the, the feel and stuff, and you get all types of controversy because this dude didn't hear your verse, you heard his verse. Now you hear it, he, you feel like he's cooking you and all types of stuff. It's just like there's no more like no more like like growth in it. Like everybody's doing their own thing. Let me let me set up an MP3 and mail you a verse or something. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna send you the stems. You got you get the stems. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm smoking crack now, so what you mean stems? My G, I'm from the old school. Just change the yeah. terminologies, my G. <laughs> yo, yo, Cass, yo, he said he's smoking. <laughs> yo, oh, son. you get the stems. <laughs> Yo, man, I hated that damn word at the beginning. Them damn stems, yo. I hated that damn word. <laughs> well, isn't it wave files? I don't know. Who cares at this point? Yeah. Yo, I don't, I mean, yeah, I, bro, I don't have anything else. I don't know if these brothers got anything else they want to ask you. But I, I, again, I appreciate you agreeing to do this interview and having this conversation with us and going down uh, memory lane with us and being 100% transparent, talking about everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like I said, like, I think that this, 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 you know, and I, I've, I'm I'm not an artist. You know, I've never been signed, but I do see like the resurgence of artists from that golden era, and figuring out like other ways to kind of keep their art alive or to, um, to revisit their art and to bring people who were previously appreciative of the art, remind them like you know we were here, and get people who may not have necessarily caught or understand the art, get them in the loop. You know, like ears are always listening to like, you know, you be in the car with your, your kids or whatever and your kids will pick up on stuff. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Yeah. You know, we this is a TikTok generation. You know, yo, before you know it, Sue, uh, TikTok dance. Yeah. <laughs> and, bro, and, and that's why I want to get back into it more than ever, mm-hmm. because I really want to do it for the kids, bro, because if you mm-hmm. really look at it. The kids are mimicking everything that they doing now, bro. Yeah, yeah. We got to be very careful with the messages we giving, bro. It's it's very easy to dumb yourself down, shake your ass, smoke this, drink yeah. that up, talk this shit and all of that. But mm-hmm. we got a whole generation that we growing behind us, bro. We got to we got to make sure we got to mind these fields, man, cuz they going to grow wild and just be just weeds just it's good, uncontrollable, bro. It's it's really sad that this whole culture right now is based on Rico law. Uh what else? Uh pharmaceutical products, mm-hmm. uh scantily clad women, right? Mm-hmm. Uh and that's about it. Yeah. What else what else it got to offer us? Offer us, bro. See, Not you sure. could be an AR today. You just yeah. all the subject matter. <laughs> <laughs> you just you found a hit. You, you, <laughs> you got the formula. Track one, one, track two, track three, and track four. And then you know the the money machine gonna try to murder me because they all like you gonna try to mess with our, our good thing we got going on. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? Trying yeah. to cut in. Yeah, yeah. sign yeah, up. They, you know they're gonna cut out your live feed in a minute. I'm telling yeah. you, that's how yeah. it works. They're gonna turn to you with well, man, we got everything there. Well, I think we're forgetting something. Oh, yeah, the music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they, they can all oh, AI that now. They don't even need us no more. Oh, God, Rob. You, hold up. I'm about to make sure you're not bots. Let me send some things real quick. I don't know. I might be speaking to AI right now. <laughs> not too good at this yeah. shit. <laughs> I don't know. Part my snot box. Don't worry about it, bro. Be Yo, this is. Maybe do with music, maybe not to do with music. But let me ask you this. What wisdom are we missing from sacred geometry and occult science? And uh, how you gonna tell how you gonna go to my, my, my real calling? Yo, I like that. <laughs> and 
how imperative is it that we know and understand sacred ge geometry and cosine? All right, well, with, when it comes to geometry and something that's sacred, sacred is exactness, preciseness, something that is, always has been, and always will be, okay? Right. You're speaking about divinity when it comes to geometry, because geometry is a is a formulation of preciseness and exactness where you can pattern things behind. So if you're lost, you could find yourself through geometry. You know, it's just like anything in life, you know, as above, so below. So if you can figure out things in a in a geometrical state, you can maybe transform that and find some balance in a higher states of understanding. It's all about piecing things and visualizing where things should be in place. So it's right. actually pulling a, a observation into view and projecting it and putting the pieces where they're supposed to be. And if you're programmed ge geometrically, placing things in place, you can place your words in place, your body in place. Your sp everything in life falls and coincides with this shit. You, you, right. you know how to center yourself, balance yourself. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, when you're speaking with occult science and esoteric information, esoteric means hidden, and occult hidden. means hidden as well. Yeah. Okay? Right. Occult is just ancient information passed on that isn't privy to everyone. Esoteric information is all of that occult information that is all in one nutshell. So, occult, all right, it comes from a form of Egyptian science, when you think about it, about it, and it comes from the Moors, which later was was developed by Greeks and other people after that. But occult is the way to remove the illusion from in front of you, because everything you see is an illusion. I don't care what you think you're seeing. It's not real. It's been proven that an atom is made up of what protons neutrons and electrons which actually is just 99.9 percent .9 space so if things are 99 if everything is made of atoms and if atoms is 99.9 .9 percent space what is truly real only your perception of reality so the occultness helps your perception the occultness helps you see through the illusion helps you remove the veil because you see things for what they actually are the true right. essence of his form, which is vibration. You're dealing with sound. Right. So I was get, I was getting to you're the dealing, point about you're, you're dealing with music. you're dealing with right. pro, you're dealing with photon particle light, which creates image. Okay, and you're dealing with you're you're a three part system. You're a mind, you're a body, and you're a spirit, and they all work in con conjunction with each other. But a lot of times we only consume with the with the body. Or we only consume with what we know, what we learn, you know what I'm saying? Or what we believe in the spirit, but all three must work in conjunction with each other for you to be your true self here. But right. none of this should exist, bro. So just have fun. This is your playground. Play, my J. Play. <laughs> none of this shit is real. Yeah, mm. man. And you know, I I I wanted to let let the listeners that that part they follow you, you know, all these geometric shapes. And how I know geometry plays some some uh, 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 a great part in music, but I think you, you explained it—the pattern, the vibration, the sonics, all of that plays a major part in it too. And, it, and, and it's funny because when I just started making some music myself, and I'm like, you talked about stems and all, and I'm like, this shit gotta fit here, it gotta sound right, it has to be <laughs> in sync, it gotta be the same beat per minute. I don't give a fuck what sample you use. You can hear just one time signature off. You know it's something off. You, you, know, you hear one off. click, one oh, little tick in it, like that 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 high dynamic range clip from you know, the digital. Off. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody just snapped some plastic in the background. I hate that so much. Draws me nuts. You hear it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I got you. I mean. I mean, I could talk about geometry and, and, and occult. I kind of stay away from the occult because, you know, I'm in like a mystery type of school thingy. Mm -hmm. And it's not privy to everyone, so I have to be disciplined in regards to it. So I apologize. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. But um, but it's, it is for everyone. This knowledge is for everyone. But people criticize it, ridicule it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And 
I'm not here for that. And it doesn't bother me anyway because I don't need any validation. But I am I'm I am here for balance and I'm centered and I'm trying to get people to see the same things I'm seeing so you can have a more fruitful life. Because right. you don't have to suffer. A lot of us just suffer and survive, but you don't have to. You have mm -hmm. everything. You've been born with everything that you need. So you don't need to really strive for anything but pleasure. Mm. I don't know if we could end on anything else but that. Right. <laughs> That's how we can cast that one. Right. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Salute. Well, I got mad love. Make sure I'm on here again soon, you heard? Yo, yes, sir.